Released in the 1921 The Crisis issue, we're going to talk about the sermon in the cradle. Una, what have you got us into? Something that is controversial, <laughs> and I love it. Let's discuss. <laughs> you have to, when you think Du Bois, after you think of amazing writing, I mean, think about what we've we've read by him. And I, I can't remember if you've read all of The Souls of Black Folk, but even if you look at like The Crisis, um, or not the crisis. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you look at this entire magazine, <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at like the comet, if you remember, uh, or, or the coming of John from, of the souls of black folk, like they're very, what's the right word that I'm looking for? Spicy. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to think of the word. I'm going to use the word caustic. That's not the right word though. Cause it's not like he's really being sarcastic. It's, it's it's something where it ignites something because it's trying to be antagonizing to you, like the reader. Like, I think it's trying to pull out some things of like harsh truths, if you will. Yeah. Do you think that imagine if uh, Nana Kwame and Du Bois like were able to collaborate on something together? <sighs> It would be it'd be really offensive to a large group of people and it'd be awesome <laughs> <laughs> in a good way because it's thought provoking. It's not just meant to be offensive to be offensive. It's like this story here. It's bringing f to the forefront to think about how would your perspective change if one detail that is very significant or insignificant on your perspective changed. When you talk about like if we use the word biblical retellings, which. I don't think this falls under, right? It's it's like this alteration of Jesus being born not in Bethlehem and not white, but black and in uh, Benin, I think it is West Africa, yeah. right? And something like you said that shouldn't shouldn't matter per se, but like certain groups that are going to read this are going to be like, why? Like, why'd you change that story? And it's just like, that's exactly the point, right? Because- you, you, you see, I struggle with this myself, right? So I, I've been at a store and I saw a black family walking through it and they grabbed a black Santa and then the mom saw it, put black Santa back and grabbed white Santa. And I mm. said, huh, that's interesting, right? Like I, I didn't, I didn't really have judgment, but I just thought it was kind of interesting, right? And I saw the reverse of that where I saw a white person per grab a black Santa because I assumed they thought it was the last one. Then they saw the white Santa and they go, oh, and they put the black Santa back and grab the white Santa. Exact same scenario in reverse. But I almost was like, I, I don't know why, but I was almost a little bit more offended, I guess, by the white person's actions than the black person's. And, and that's something that like I struggle with because it reminds me of the same challenge from uh, Toni Morrison, if you remember her Rest is Teeth story, where you never knew, you knew salt and pepper, but you didn't know which one was which, right? And your own stereotypes and expectations were being played against you. And that's what I feel like is, is happening with the story, right? Something that's insignificant and shouldn't matter is probably going to ignite some people. And I think the reason that it matters is because of representation. For somebody that it will matter strongly is there is a lack of representation. If you look at this from a certain perspective, you uh, that Jesus is portrayed as, you know, Caucasian, he has blonde hair, blue eyes, and you're able to relate to that because that's what your expectation is of seeing because that might be what you are or what you're used to seeing in your everyday life. And then when you change that one little thing, it's odd to you. Or when it's changed and you want representation, then it, it also becomes equally as odd because it is something that you're not used to seeing because of how he, Jesus is portrayed in modern art, in old art, in, in every aspect of our lives. And so I think that what Du Bois here is done here is genius because it just makes you think, you know, would it change anything at all? Should it change anything at all if you change what color someone is? And especially if that someone is, you know, to many people, their Lord and Savior. And I think exactly to that point, it goes deeper. It's, it talks about it in the intro of this book, in, in the collection that I have, in terms of, it's not just representation for for that. Because in the intro, it talks about how how it can be problematic 
for a community who's been, I mean, if you think about when this came out, right, December 1921, who's been repressed for, for many, many years, to look at this this savior, this coming from the white race, right? You're, you're, you're oppressing race, if you will. We keep saying white, right? Like, <laughs> there's the, the, old, the old joke, what's, what's not in the Bible, right? Yeah, white people. <laughs> <laughs> They're from the mountains of the Caucasus. Or Caucasian, <laughs> <laughs> right? But it, it the point being is it's talking about you know the idea of of savior the the, the idea of, of of mystical and magical help coming that matters to them more than it does to to a tip a lot of typical people who are not oppressed, right? And I'd like to think about that from like the flip perspective, like you said, where let's say we find out the truth. Let's say we find out Christianity is absolutely true. There's there's no denying it at this point in time. This truth comes out and it also reveals that Jesus was black at that point in time. Some people wouldn't matter, right? Like, okay, like, yeah, like let's, let's redraw the image. We now know the truth. Uh, Santa, Jesus, that sort of thing. But you know, there's people that are not going to be okay with that. Right? There's those people, we, and we've talked to one where we said, if you found out that this religion was true, would you convert to it? You know, and they they said no, right? Because for some people, they're they're looking for something else, and there's actually sometimes things that keep them from, I don't know, taking certain steps, if you will. And in this case, the idea that race would stop some people from worshiping something or from believing in the truth. That's pretty significant for someone, like you said, maybe it shouldn't be, but it is. I think it comes down to the last line is where he says, always the world has ridiculed its better souls. That's huge, right? I mean, that's very impactful for the fact that if something this big mattered to you, then are you truly doing what you're supposed to or are, are, are you worshiping how you were supposed to? I don't know. I mean, that that's obviously a very subjective, personal, you know, way of handling life. I don't think anybody should tell you how to worship uh, or whom to worship. But if the color of someone's skin would say, hey, I don't want to follow that religion anymore, even though I know it's 1000% true. Why does it matter? And I think that's the, what Du Bois, to me, that's what Du Bois was trying to point out here. What are your thoughts on perhaps even some of like the differences, right? So why make it Benin, right? We've talked a little bit about that, but why make it, was it gold, perfume? What was the last one? Medicine, medicine, gold, perfume, and medicine. Why make it that? Why, why? instead of the Sermon on the Mount, it's basically the Sermon in the Cradle, right? Like, what do you think some of these these differences are? I think it comes back to the fact that Du Bois might be pointing out to us, if the something so subtle matters, do these things matter? Uh, do do what, what details matter and what details don't matter? Where do you draw the line? Because there's a lot of symbology in, in specific items, specific people, names, places, All of this has power in people's minds. Uh, You know, think of, you know, the holy cities, you know, Jerusalem and Mecca, Medina. These places have power. Names have power. I mean, people, when they pray, you know, they say, you know, in in Jesus' name, amen, that that his name has power, you know, and, uh, you know, his name is even really that sort of name. You know, it's become, you know, Europeanized, um, you know, so... Does it matter that we say it different? Does it matter that he looks different in your mind's eye? Does it matter that the the story gives you some different information depending on, you know, which version of the Bible you read? And I think if you have faith, it doesn't. And that's maybe what I kind of took away from the story is none of those details really matter. It's your personal relationship and your faith with your Lord or God or whatever you you choose to worship. Well, maybe it's not that. Maybe it doesn't universally matter, but maybe it matters to a specific person, right? Like maybe what's important to some person can be absolute for that person, but maybe not be absolute for others. Absolutely. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Bad puns are my favorite. You know, uh, I'm no W.E. Du Bois. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. There's something to be said about 
these spiritualist type stories. He he's not a Tolstoy. He doesn't write directly to that, but you'll notice there's always this structure behind the scenes. We we've talked before about how there's all these biblical references in the story, but it's not taken from a perspective of of truth. It's almost like kind of questioning and opening. Uh, there's something that we need to continue to explore with Du Bois in that element, and, and I'm glad that we picked this story to kind of go through that. Let us know what your thoughts are. We're going to leave a playlist of other Du Bois talks down below. My name has been Una. Peace. Peace.